Uh, no, you can't read that. Um, I stole this picture from your book, but this is basically what it says, okay? So the glycolysis. Glycolysis just starts off with six carbon sugar. Okay. Specifically, this is glucose. That six carbon sugar, by using two ATP, will then have a six carbon sugar that's known as glucose that's attached with a phosphate. So again, it has... Plus phosphate, yeah. Okay. So it uses the ATP to do that. Now, it then takes those six carbons and actually breaks them down into two, three carbons with phosphate. Three carbons with a phosphate. And then here's where that couple reaction comes into play. The now, this NAD plus is an electron acceptor. Yep. So when it releases that, when it grabs that hydrogen, it has the same, at the same time, it actually adds the two phosphates that we lost up here, and it releases two ATP. Okay? So the, the phosphate that was attached to the three-carbon sugar on top is then taken away. So again, it takes away, and it has... ATP released. Okay, now that's not a whole lot of ATP. If we stop right there, all of a sudden we're at net zero. And sometimes whenever you go through, um, uh, what's it called? If you've been working really hard and you start getting those muscle cramps, yeah. this is actually where your body stops right here. So you use the energy, and you give back the energy. You use the energy, you give back the energy. You use the energy, and you give back the energy. And you go through what's called lactate, uh, uh, lactic fermentation. Okay, and that's where you get the lactic acid. The lactic acid is basically like putting peanut butter on your muscles. Okay, right. you know, your muscles go like this, they contract and relax, they contract and relax. Well, pretend, like, try to do that. Instead of being contracting and relaxing, contracting and relaxing, you contract and relax, but you got peanut butter in your fingers. Contract and relax, and contract and relax. Well, that's what lactic acid basically does. It essentially, like, gums up your muscles. So it's acting those myosin that are trying to pull and release and pull and release and move back and forth, it can't do it as well. So then you get what's called a three car the three carbon what's called a pyruvate br. Oops. P y r u v a t e pyruvate. Okay. You don't want ever to. But the problem is if you don't have enough oxygen, then there if there's not enough oxygen. That you're not actually allowing for enough NADP. If you don't have enough NAD, or say NAD plus, and if you don't have enough NAD plus, then it can't release the extra ATPs. And so it can't go into the next step. So this is just glycolysis, okay? But your body actually most of the time goes through that right now. Like right now, you're not getting muscle cramps, right? I'm hoping no one is sitting here getting, maybe you got like a butt, like muscle cramps. You're saying too long. I apologize for that. Um, your body doesn't stop there. Um, it will then take that process. Okay. It will then use the 2 ADP. Again, this is the, the, this first part is the glycolysis. But eventually what you end up, sorry, sorry, reverse that. Um, this is the, what's known as that coupled reaction. So even though we use 2 ADP, we then release back 2 ADP, or 2 ATP. Okay. Um, this is a catabolic reaction because we're using energy to break down solutions. Um, it goes on in the cytosol. Remember what's the cytosol? Oh, the liquid part of the cytoplasm. There you go. The liquid part of the cytoplasm. Um, and it just takes two glu it takes glu glucose, one glucose, and goes into two pyruvates. And even though you uh, use two, since each of the three carbons, when it changes from three carbon to pyruvate, it gains two ATP, even though you're using two ATP, you actually gain back two more. Because you actually gain four. Okay. So your net gain is actually two ATP. Yeah, we have energy. Not a whole lot, but we have energy. Okay. Now, it's the Krebs cycle. And is anyone here in the I mean physiology with Mr. Cox? Right? He wants you to like know exactly like what each of the steps of the Krebs cycle are. Y'all are ahead.
but in this class you don't need to know exact steps. Here's why. According to the learning standards of the AP board, it says that, that knowing the specific steps, that knowing that, um, you know, you, talk, you, you go with the CETL code A and they have all these different steps, all these different things, it says that's beyond the scope of the, the course. So what I want you to know is this, that it does start off with Perube. It has to add, it has to add a CoA to form acetyl CoA. And then I also want you to know basically what's being released. So I want you to know that basically how much carbon dioxide is being released. So two, sorry, one, three carbon dioxide are released. And then also know what else is released, like the NADH, the FADH, and the ATP. So I want you to know that two that uh, that the pyruvate's going in, and remember it's going to go through this twice because there's actually two pyruvate made. So even though only one ATP is produced, it's actually making two ATP for a glucose molecule. Is that because it's where it divided up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. When it split into from the six carbon into the three carbon, and then turns into a pyruvate, so now each carbon now can go through that three carbon that pyruvate can go through the Krebs cycle. 